Hey everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Saga. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. How's it going, Hannah? It's going well, and how are you? It's going well, and I feel real good because it's actually been a little while since we've did some comic stories. Mm. Been kind of centering ourselves on some books and the games and stuff like that, so... Uh, I really wanted to get back into doing some comics. I know that I'm really eager to get into the Star Wars series that takes place between five and six. And of course, there's a Vader series that runs parallel with that as well. But before we get there, we're going to go back and do the second Vader series written by Charles Soule. And we're doing volume one of that series called Imperial Machine. Now, what's crazy about this book and this series, so it's four volumes, I believe. And this takes place immediately after episode three. So Vader is still, you know, laying on the bed and getting fixed up and everything. And it picks up right there. But this collects the first six issues of the series. And so, uh, again, written by Charles Soule, who's been a huge contributor to Star Wars publishing over the last few years. Obviously, he's one of the major contributors to the the High Republic series. And uh, hands down, probably one of my top three favorite comic writers. I've watched, I've followed him since DC when he was writing for Swamp Thing and things like that. And he's just amazing. So anything he touches, I'm pretty much a fan of. So uh, we'll get into some major things here with this. But anyway, Hannah, overall, what were your thoughts of this this book? I have a feeling that this might be my favorite comic series at this point. Uh, I kind of think so. It will, too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Just so in, in a nutshell, what we see in this first section is we see Darth Vader getting his red blade and also meeting the Inquisitors for the first time. So that's that's in a nutshell what we get. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really, really interesting about this is that we see Vader. It's like the birth of Vader or Vader learning how to walk. I think is probably the best way to say it, because in a lot of these comics, you know, in Rogue One, in several different scenarios and books, we see how powerful Vader is. And through this ser- through this bit, you know, he realizes he has to steal a Jedi saber, make the crystal bleed, but he has to basically do it through murder. And we see just truly how much anger he has in him, mm-hmm. how much anger is truly boiling. And it's not just boiling uh, because of the fact that he feels like he failed or because it's because it's against the Jedi because they betrayed him, but it's also against his own master. And we see just how dangerous Vader can be when he loses control. But we also see Vader in the beginning not is not easily defeatable, but he is defeatable. Because he's learning how to walk. He's learning in this new body what he can and cannot do. And we already immediately see that he knows he can't rise against Sidious because Sidious almost immediately (laughs) shocks him with lightning. So he knows right away the biggest weakness that he has. He knows his master can easily hurt him. And it's absolutely heartbreaking to see Anakin go through this. And there's even at one point where you think, now we know how the story goes, but if you didn't know how the story went, you, there's a moment where you think he redeems himself. He actually mm-hmm. decides, you know what? No, I've chosen my path. Like, I, I, I've chosen the wrong path. I need to go down the right path. But he's like, no, I've come too far at this point. And then we meet the Inquisitors. And so it's interesting to see that Sidious has already had the Inquisitors kind of in the background 
before Vader. So it's just a very, very interesting dynamic, especially after reading Rise of the Red Blade. This puts a lot of right. very interesting things into perspective. So that that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. It's very emotional. I feel like this whole thing is going to be emotional. So that's what it is in a nutshell. That's my takeaway from it. What about you? Well, I really, really liked it. I, and this is the, kind of the second time I've revisited this because I have actually read this series already. We just have it. I, I was doing it before we actually did Beyond the Saga because this thing came out in, what I say? It, was, it came out in 2017. Um, so I was reading this when it was coming out. And you're right. I think this is going to be one of your favorite series. I, I I thought of it too when you told me you had already read uh, Rise of the Red Blade because for that reason I wanted to show basically the the start of this is the start of the Inquisitors, um, which is crazy. I think it's it's neat to see I mean, and obviously it comes from Palpatine and you know there's oh the the introduction of you know the Grand Inquisitor as well right so. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just so much in this book, you know, from Vader's perspective about everything. And, you know, one of the first shots too, this is the book. A lot of people reference this. This is the book where it shows them destroying all the Jedi lightsabers as well. Um, in fact, this is where there's been controversy because, they're holding up uh you see you see Yoda's lightsaber actually because technically he drops it during his fight of with Palpatine in episode three. Yes. But there's so then- questions of how Luke gets gets it. Well apparently Yoda had two lightsabers. So huh. they just they just say that, right? He had two lightsabers. There you go. So yeah, in a way, this whole thing is uh, incredible. I, I think to see in these six issues, like you said, the the bleeding of a crystal, him hunting down his first Jedi, you know, uh, the Inquisitors, the, the beginning of the Grand Inquisitor, and, of course, Palpatine's intentions, and, uh, it's just there's a lot that you learn from it. I feel like we're gonna learn, and especially you for the first time, you're gonna learn a lot in these next few issues. It's there's a lot going on in this whole Vader series. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It, it, it's pretty good. And again, Charles Soul is just phenomenal, and it's really, uh, it's a really must read. I feel like to understand you know, Vader's mindset, like you said, with this at this point, but also as we go further, you know, we're cause, cause the beauty of this, if I recall, you know, we're not very far removed from Padme. We so there's not. a lot that's going to happen with his emotions still. And he's still reeling with that loss and so, uh, yeah, there's, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So what else, uh, anything in particular you wanted to I, mention? I think, I think that was it. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I'm, I am very excited to see what's next. Very, very excited. Mm-hmm. So what rating would you give this? Uh, uh, I, I mean, it's definitely, it's hard to give it a five, but I'd probably go four and a half. I would give it a 4.5 as well. Yeah. It's like right there. Uh, it's, it's good. It's really good. Now, where does, how does this, you know, we talk about, we talk about the impact, the impact of the saga and these characters. I mean, how much does this actually change at all your perception of Vader? I don't think it necessarily changes it. It just brings it more into perspective and it sharpens it, uh, sharpens Mm -hmm. understanding of him and his story. 
Um, so I think it's a great it greatly impacts the whole thing. And then we also actually see what is the whole quote unquote ceremony of becoming Sith of making your own, making a crystal bleed of somebody you've murdered. So yeah, it's incredibly impactful. Yeah, I do too. I think, I think, you know, Vader is, we're getting so much content around Vader right now mm-hmm. with, you know, obviously these books came out years ago. I mean, it's been six years since these books came out, which we were getting, you know, we were getting an insight of Vader and of course, even Luke and Leia and them when we were covering the series of comics between four and five. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have kind of the same effect when we cover the ones between five and six, because, you know, you're in that time period and you kind of start seeing, putting the dots together, how they go from one movie to the other. Yeah. And right now, you know, there's a big gap still, even though we've gotten a lot of content, there's still a big gap between three and four, you know, 19 years. And so we've gotten Vader a little bit in Rebels. We got Vader now in the Obi-Wan series. And now this book kind of take kicks it off a little bit. Now this book doesn't take you all the way to episode four, obviously. Uh, in fact, it only covers, I don't even, I can't remember. Maybe it only covers probably the first maybe year that he is a Sith, mm. you know maybe two years or so, because it's not very far in. But you do get a a really good sense of, like you said, his his personality and where his mind and his body and his heart is in this. And it does give you, I mean, there is obviously, there's always been, there's obviously a struggle between Anakin and Vader. You know, he's not, no matter how much He's tried to kill Anakin. In the end, we know he doesn't, right? He becomes Anakin again. But that struggle, and, and you know, and we got, and no, not really people who haven't talked about it too much because you're not, you haven't done it, but the, uh, the VR game, you know, Vader mm. Immortal, that takes place also between three and four, more closer to four. But there's a lot in there that really changes your process of who he is. And what he's trying to do, and a lot, some of that is in this actually. It, it, okay. To me, which you know, it's a little vague for you right now, but some of what happens later in the series, comic series, kind of touches what happens in that Vader Immortal game. So, okay, um, yeah, I need you. To, you just need to borrow my Oculus and just play the <laughs> Vader series, the Vader Immortal games, and then you can we can talk about those. All right. Or you might want you might just have to watch YouTube and we can. Because I'm sure someone did a walkthrough. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure someone did a walkthrough. I'm sure it's out there in the YouTube reverse somewhere. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, this is very, very good series. Very good comic. Uh, I, I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm not going to have to push Hannah too far, too hard to finish this out. Nope. So not at we'll, all. We'll cover this more. Yeah, we'll cover this more as as the weeks go. So. All right. Uh, all right. Thanks, Hannah. Good Good to be back on the Beyond the Saga. Yeah, it feels good to be back. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh, check us out on Inside the Force, obviously, and uh, all our other shows here on YouTube. Um, and uh, right now we're in the middle of Ahsoka. I don't really like dating these episodes of things, but we, know we are in the middle of Ahsoka, so a lot going on there. And uh and, and yeah, Anakin's in Ahsoka as well. So, uh, spoilers. Spoilers. But no, uh, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Come back next time. We got all kinds of uh, Beyond the Sagas coming. Take care, Hannah. Take care, Dave. We'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.